Okay, welcome to the first set of lessons on our tower defense game. This is what we're going to be building. Uh, the artwork is going to change throughout these. We've made games in the past in my class, and so this is one of the games that we had a couple of years ago. It's called Fat Kids, and uh, Fat Kids is a tower defense game where down here in the corner there's going to be a chubby child and junk food, hamburgers and pizza and ice cream is going to be coming out from the top, and this child is going to have his toys defending him, and the toys are going to be shooting healthy food at the junk food. So broccoli, for instance, and this truck is going to be shooting carrots, and toy dinosaur is going to be shooting apples, and so on. So that's the idea. And so we're going to get all this functionality going in this first set of lessons. I don't know how many videos it's going to take, but that's the idea. We'll do the pathfinding and the enemies and all that stuff later. But in this first set of videos, we are going to have a number of uh, files that we're going to create in JavaScript. We've got this guy called JS Vector. We'll be doing that at some point. Uh, we've got game.js, which is going to be where our game starts. And then we're going to have bullets and towers. So to accomplish all of this, let's go ahead and get started. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at my HTML and see how this is set up. So the HTML document has a head and a body. If I look in the head, I notice that I'm attaching files to my project uh, according to these folders. So I just notice in here I have JS Vector according to this inside the Libraries folder. And I think I just showed it, so it was not there. So let's go ahead and move him into Libraries. And so now that matches. These other guys, Tower, .js, all my main game files are going to be right inside this main folder and so I don't need to have anything showing here except the name of the file so I have game tower and uh, bullets is going to be in here also but that's how this is going to work uh, in any case if I look down at the body uh, I'm going to have info div and uh, I'm going to have um, menu divs as well so notice that inside the wrapper okay so I've got this guy called wrapper div and I'm creating him in HTML and then I've got my div for this info div and I've got a canvas div and a menu div so if we look back at the project let's go ahead and do that for a second so that's what's going on here I'm gonna have an info div which is this brown thing and inside the info div are gonna be info tiles and this is gonna have all kinds of information about the game this is the canvas and it has a background picture and then this is the menu div down the side here in this case it's vertical and each of these guys is a div called a menu tile div and so we're going to be building these in this first couple of videos. Notice that each one has its own picture. And when I click on him and drag this out, I get another picture. So this is a side view of the teddy bear. This is the top view. This is the side view of the spaceship. And this is the top view. So I'm going to need images for the button itself, for the menu tile. And then I'm going to call this the uh, canvas tower div. So these are towers and uh, for the tower defense game and each tower each button really is going to have three images associated with it one is the side view one is the top view and the other one is the bullet that's going to be associated with each of these towers okay so now back into the html notice that i have this info tile div i'm going to actually build these here and the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to put in the HTML code for the info div. And the reason I'm doing this is that I'm going to build the menu tile divs in JavaScript. And that way we're going to see sort of two ways to do the same thing. And so let's go ahead and put our info tile divs in with HTML. So in between the start of the info div and the end of the info div, so these are my two uh, div tags for this uh, top div, I'm going to create these guys and these guys are going to be um, the individual tiles so inside the info div there's going to be an info tile and it's also going to be a div so I have a beginning of my div class and end and then I put the name of what's going on in there right here so there's going to be a bank value and these can be whatever values we want later on through the uh, running of the game we can put whatever values we want in here but the text for bank for instance will be the bank value and which wave we're going through and uh, how many en enemies are left and all that kind of thing so whatever we want to put in here we can the key thing is I'm putting these guys in through uh, HTML directly later on when I do the menu div I'm going to be putting these in through JavaScript just so we can see the two different ways to do this also notice that I have a class and the reason I have a class for each of these is that each one of these guys is going to have the same style in CSS so instead of making an ID with six different IDs I can do class and I can style all of these the same way 
to see this, let's go into CSS styles, and I should find a class in here called info tile div. Notice it has a dot here instead of a hashtag. So the hashtag is for an ID. There's going to be a canvas div. There's only one of those, so that's an ID. But there's going to be a five or six or seven different items with this info tile div. So I style that as a class. I use a period here, and these are the key things. I can give it a size. I can give it a margin. I can give it uh, padding. And all these kinds of things I can set right here. OK, so I'm inside the game.js. Uh, file and this is where my game is going to start. Notice I have use strict up here for the latest version of JavaScript, which is ES6. We're going to be using class notation. So I've got this use strict, uh, which is necessary to run uh, the ECMAScript 6. And then I have window, add event listener, load. So this is going to simply wait for the page to be loaded. As soon as that happens, it'll trigger a load event, and I'm going to look for a function called init. I've got one global variable right now. It's called tower game. I'm going to try to keep my global variables to a minimum. And I could write the entire game so that this is my only global variable. And then I have a constant frame rate equals 30. So right down here I go, uh, I'm calling the function init. Init happens right here. This is where I'm going to create an instance of tower game. And it says window.setTimeout animate. So this is going to just wait for a hundred milliseconds, a tenth of a second, before I jump down here into animate, and that was just to make sure everything's loaded. Uh, to be honest, this line is not really necessary. I could just call the animate function uh, as soon as I'm done knitting everything. But uh, here's my animate function. I'm going to run the tower game, and then I'm going to request an animation frame. Notice that this guy calls animate again, so this is another kind of listener. It's going to wait for a specified amount of time, then it's going to call this animate function again, and so I will have this happening at a specific time interval, which is important for a game. Okay, so my game constructor right now, notice I'm using this uh, ES6 notation class game, and it has a constructor function. Right now there's nothing in the constructor function. There's nothing in run, there's nothing in render. So this constructor function is going to be called from line 10. Line 10 is up here. It says tower game equals new game, and that's where the constructor function is called. And then I'm down here in animate. Notice it says tower.run. That's where this function is going to be called. Right now there's nothing in here. And so uh, if I run this program right now, let's go ahead and take a look and see what it looks like. If I just go ahead and run it, notice that I set these guys up in HTML, so they're fine. But I have nothing down here. I don't have this div set up, and I have nothing going on in the background. So we're going to go ahead and add the menu tile divs. We'll add some things to the constructor, to the run function, and then we'll go ahead and add these menu tile divs in a function called create menu tile divs. So the first thing I'm going to do inside my constructor is create some variables. And uh, these variables are going to be for um, they're going to be arrays, and uh, they're going to be arrays for enemies, towers, and bullets. Actually, I don't need enemies for a while, but I'll just go ahead and throw it in right now. And uh, the next thing I want to do is create the canvas. So creating the canvas is going to be important for the game. Right now, there was just a background when I showed you the game, but we're going to actually put the canvas in next. So let me just go ahead and say create canvas, and let's add that code. And I should actually say create canvas and the context. Remember, the context is the piece that has all the functionality for the game. The canvas is just a, a kind of a container. It has width. It has a couple of properties, width and height. But the context is where I can draw different shapes and so forth. And so the context is very important. And so the code for this is going to be this. So it says, first of all, get um, element or create element canvas. So I'm creating a canvas. And then I have this little bit of. Uh, code in here in case the canvas is not created for whatever reason. If this is invalid, if, if not this.canvas or not this.canvas get context, I'm going to throw no valid con canvas bound. And I guess this would be for older browsers, but uh, this.canvas I can set the width and the height. I want it to fit inside my wrapper div and I want it to fit underneath the info div and then document get element by idea can div so that I created a canvas div and I'm going to append this dot canvas into that div. So inside the wrapper div there's a canvas div and now inside of the canvas div I'm appending this child. So it'll go inside of or on the DOM it will be attached as a node uh, in that DOM tree to the canvas div element. Finally I'm going to create a convis context so this dot context is equal to this dot canvas and the canvas has a get context method I'm using 2d this is going to be a two-dimensional game and so if that doesn't exist I will throw another no valid context found 
Okay, so now I'm going to create my tile divs uh, for the menu tiles. And uh, unlike the info tiles, I'm going to create these in a function in JavaScript. And so to do this, I want to go ahead and write this line of code where I say this dot tile divs. So this is going to be return an array of uh, tile divs. And uh, notice that I also have an array of towers up here. The towers are actually the things that are going on to the canvas. The tile divs are these divs that are going to function as buttons. They're going to have little rollovers, so when I roll over them, they change color. And so I've got to write this function called create tile divs. So here's what that function looks like. It says create tile divs. I'm calling that from above. And uh, it really has three parts. I'm going to create a variable which is an array of tiles and this is local to this function. I also have a tiles array up above, but I'm going to return this. It says four. Uh, I'm going to create, in this case, five tiles. So I is going to go from zero to four. And once I create all of these tiles in this for loop, I'm going to return tiles. And that guy will then get loaded into this dot tile divs. So maybe it would have been better to actually call this tile divs and then I can return this guy down here like so. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a button or a div that's going to be placed in the menu div. So the menu div is the large uh, vertical div that's going to contain all these menu, uh, tile divs and then each uh, is going to be a menu tile and it's going to be placed inside of this tiles array. Or I actually change the name so let's go ahead and call this guy uh, tile divs array. So these are tile divs. And so I'll go ahead and paste the code in right here. So I'm not the quickest typist in the world, so I'm going and pasting this code in so you don't have to watch me type. And in any case, I've got this uh, menu tile div mtd and it says document.create div. So I'm using JavaScript to actually create a div element. So with the info divs, I created them in HTML and here I'm creating a div in uh, JavaScript. And so I need a path to where these images exist. The images exist inside my images folder. And so for the towers, I named them tower1s. I wonder why there's an s there. Anyway, .png. So if I look in my folder, I should be able to see these guys. So let's go inside uh, images, and I can see uh, tower1s.png. And so then I'll do tower2.png, tower2s, tower3. Oh, I, I guess so s distinguishes the ones that are going to appear. Uh, on the canvas versus uh, these guys, the ones that are going to appear, uh, appear inside the buttons. In any case, this is the path. So this is just a string, and I'm concatenating a number uh, with these different guys. So I've got canvas tower image, and I've got canvas bullet image. These are guys that are going to appear uh, on the canvas, so these are the top down views. And now immediately after this, I'm going to go ahead and create that uh, mtd.canvas tower image is going to be a new image. So each button is going to have its own image. I'm going to create an event listener. So when I load that, or if I get an error, I'll go ahead and report this. This is really helpful. This error means that if you're not, if your stuff isn't working right, if you don't have the files in the right place, that when you're debugging it, it'll throw this image and it'll say, "Hey, this guy was not loaded," and it'll just tell you to go and look for this particular image. Uh, in any case, the source is going to be this guy, which remember is uh, this whole path here. I could have written this line of code right down here, but it's a little bit cleaner, I think, to write it like this. So I'm loading that image into MTD canvas tower image, and this is the source. And now I'm going to do all those same steps for the other set of images. I have the canvas bullet image. Again, these are the images that are going to appear on the canvas. So the same kind of thing. So now every menu tile div is going to have uh, these two images associated with it. And once I have these uh, menu tile divs, I've associated images with these guys. I'm going to go ahead and document get element by ID. That's the menu div. And so this menu tile div is going to be appended as a child of the menu div. So the menu div is that long vertical one that is on the right side of my screen. And then um, each one is each of these menu tile divs is going to be appended and will appear inside of that div. So now the menu tile div exists. It exists inside um, the menu div. And so now I can associate, for instance, each one can have a cost associated with it, an ID, so I can refer back to it later. And I'm pushing this into my tiles div. And actually, I changed the name of that. So let's go ahead and change this to um, tiles div, tile divs. And I'm going to push in my new menu tile div. 
and now uh, I need to have one more path in here and this is for the actual image that's going to appear on the button itself and so I create a tile image path and I'm going to have a tile image and uh, say new image and now it says tile image I'm going to add an event listener to that again if there's an error if it doesn't show up it'll help me debug that and then finally tile image dot source and uh, I go ahead and set the source equal to that path and then finally I'm appending remember that menu tile div is a div and I'm appending this child to that div and then finally when I'm done with all of that I can go ahead and return the tiles and that will work okay so now I want to reload the page and see what happens remember I made all of these info divs with HTML and now I want to see what happens I've got this create tile divs done and so boom I reloaded the page and I can see I've got a tile div don't have the callbacks in here yet but if I go into the console let's go into uh, inspect and uh, I'll come over here and um, let's go into the console and I'm going to type in let's see tower game dot uh, tile divs and if I hit that guy and enter notice that I now have five tile divs zero through four and if I uh, look inside these they're filled with all kinds of things and uh, this is what I can now uh, use these I'm going to add some functionality to these buttons but now these buttons are all showing up and they all have an image uh, associated with them and the uh, other images are hidden right now so that is a good start I'll go ahead and stop this video here and we'll pick it up and add functionality to these buttons next that's it for today bye bye